you know, if there's one thing I must say about this, it's that you don't want to miss Don't Breathe. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Ahead of my review of Don't Breathe 2, I first wanted to discuss 2016's Don't Breathe. Before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it or if you were planning on seeing it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's jump right into it and let's talk about Don't Breathe. This focuses on a trio of friends who hoping to walk away with a massive fortune, break into the house of a blind man played by Stephen Lang, who isn't as helpless as he seems. This is directed by Fede Alvarez, who also co-wrote the screenplay with Rodo Sayagas, who's actually directing the sequel, and this is their second collaboration along with star Jane Levy after 2013's remake of The Evil Dead, which I thought was pretty good, though I know people were a bit divided on it generally. Though whether you like or hate The Evil Dead remake, I think we can all be in agreement that this was a significant improvement over that film either way. And it's one of my favorite horror movies of the last decade, holding up exceptionally well with repeated viewings. This film actually had me fooled initially, probably because I wasn't properly paying attention to the trailers when they were first out, but given the premise and knowing that Alvarez worked on The Evil Dead, and just assuming based on the overall feel of the trailer, I thought this was going to be much more of a supernatural based film. Especially since Stephen Lang's character is blind, yet manages to easily chase them through the house. So I thought there was a little more to him than that. However, it just turns out he's Daredevil apparently, and his heightened senses allow him to stealthily move through the house to find the rest of our characters. And I gotta say, I was really impressed that we managed to not just get a horror story totally void of these supernatural elements, but that it also worked as well as it did here. Now, not that I dislike supernatural based horror movies, because some of my favorite horror films are based in the supernatural, but a lot of good horror does stem from our innermost fears and a heightened manifestation of real world anxieties. And I think the things in horror that can be done when keeping the story grounded in reality can maybe go a bit underappreciated at times. I mean, if you ever need a good example of realistic horror, just go check out Misery. This film though is an hour and a half of this one giant cat and mouse chase between Lang's character Nordstrom and our protagonists. And we've gotten our fair share of these horror films where the bulk of the action just takes place in one location, and it's one of those things that lends itself to easily falling into this trap of becoming very repetitive in one note. But what's incredible is that you never once feel that here. This isn't exactly a huge house, yet through Alvarez's direction, it feels a hundred times bigger than it actually is, especially due to his excellent use of tight camera angles and his manipulation of the lighting. So a great job was done in avoiding repetition, instead turning this house into a giant maze, and as a result, there was never really a dull moment. This is a film that's constantly on the move, and it always found creative ways to make use of its spaces, whether it be in just one room of the house, or in one moment, even a car. I found myself thoroughly engaged the entire time, and I felt the stakes of each scene, all of which felt relevant to the story. And I think what helps too is that these aren't just a series of emotionally hollow chase scenes. One thing that's worth noting, besides how Alvarez nails the atmosphere, is the great attention to detail in regards to the characters. Now, are these characters with the most original motivations? No. I mean, our protagonists are a group of petty thieves who are robbing this house as one last job before they move, and I mean, how many times did we hear that one before? Yet Alvarez and Sayaga's screenplay does a great job of trying to give each of these characters a distinct personality and show that even if someone's meant to be likable, they're not flat out perfect. Now, the only one who I'd say is the most irredeemable is actually not Nordstrom, who to be clear is ultimately a horrible person, though more on that in a moment, but one of the thieves, which is Money, played by Daniel Zabato. I am gonna backtrack just slightly on what I just got over saying, because I thought this guy was nothing more than a one dimensional jerk. Like, he he falls into that trope where you have the one mean friend in the group and that's all there really is to his personality. He makes fun of Alex, played by Dylan Minnette, and Rocky, played by Jane Levy. He approaches every situation with a brash attitude, he's a little arrogant, and I really didn't care all that much for the guy. And there wasn't much done to make us care, so 
there's that. But I did like the character development that went into everyone else, and that's because I thought all the performances were pretty solid. Now, I think of the other three characters, Dylan Minnette had maybe the least to do in terms of range. I mean, he gets some nice emotional beats as we explore a little bit of the relationship with Alex and Rocky, though I don't think this went quite as far with him as I would have liked. But what they did with him was good, to be clear, though Jane Levy was really solid as Rocky who, along with Nordstrom, is given the most well-written backstory and character development. Now, it's nothing groundbreaking, as it checks off things we've seen before, like she has a troubled home life, her mom doesn't treat her well, she wants to just escape with her younger sister. But what I liked is, we only hit these emotional beats oh so briefly before the main events really kicked in. Though due to Levy's handling of the material, approaching these scenes in a less is more way, with subtler, gentler interactions, she really gets us to feel for this character. And even when the main events do kick in, that's how she approaches each and every moment, not opting to just scream and yell her way through everything, instead letting us really connect with her based simply on facial expressions, making these moments a lot more effective. But then we get to Stephen Lang as Nordstrom, and I gotta say, oh my god, just one of the best horror villains I can recall in recent memory. And talk about one of the best bait and switches I've seen in a while, because at first, you do feel bad for the guy, and for a brief second when the three friends go into his house, you're meant to feel like you're supposed to have more sympathy for him. He's blind, he's a veteran, he's about to get robbed, he lost his daughter, he doesn't have a lot going for him, and when you hear him talk, Lang sells it in such a way that you genuinely feel bad for him because because he just sounds helpless. Yet what's great is he does so in a way that it doesn't come off as manipulative or anything. And even when the chase kicks in and you see how powerful he actually is, at first he just comes off like he's still just defending himself. So it puts you in this position where you feel bad for this character who's about to get robbed and understand he's defending himself, but at the same time, you know the three friends aren't really bad people. Well, maybe money is, and you don't want to see them get seriously injured. So for a brief moment, you're put in this rock in a hard place, and I liked how the film really plays with your emotions in that regard, which again speaks volumes for Alvarez and Syagas' talents as screenwriters. But then of course, we start learning more about Nordstrom as more rooms in the house are explored, and we learn that this guy has a much darker side to him than we realize, but even as Lang continues to sell it with this really emotionally strong performance, and you do understand his incredibly twisted motivations, now you suddenly feel a lot less sympathy for him as the film goes on, to the point that you hate him. And again, regarding the way the film just plays with your emotions like that and just flips everything around, it was just top notch. And also, I'll still never be able to look at a turkey baster quite the same way after watching this movie. Though, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll just leave it there in the interest of keeping things PG. But I gotta say, the way this combines some solid character work, along with constantly making things interesting in terms of this chase throughout this house, was nothing short of brilliant in my book. And such an effective combination is what makes for really good horror. Don't Breathe is an excellent film, and one of my favorite horror movies of the 2010s. While it contains a seemingly simplistic setup, with characters who at times do feel like they may hit some familiar beats, the final product completely turns all that on its head to give us a truly thrilling time. The performances are all top-notch, the twists are messed up yet incredibly effective, and the way in which this one location is manipulated to feel a lot larger than it is, with so many inventive and creative setups, is nothing short of both nerve-wracking and brilliant. This is a fast-paced, exciting nail-biter of a film, and it's one that you definitely don't want to miss. Don't Breathe gets a 9 out of 10. So stay tuned and be on the lookout for my review of Don't Breathe 2, hopefully coming soon. But in the meantime, let me know, did you see Don't Breathe, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Did you find this one equally as exciting as I did? Are you looking forward to the sequel? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoy this video, please like it and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone, and keep having fun with film.